Warning, the following episode may contain explicit language and some general grossness. It's kind of part and parcel of the subject material. It's what we do. We come upon a teenage boy entering his 18th century French countryside farmhouse to speak with his mother. Mom! 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 What? I'm hungry. So then eat something. Wait, come on. Ugh. <laughs> do the it's, doubtfire. Do the doubtfire. That's fine. We know it's French so, countryside. Just... Okay. So then eat something. That's a perfect accent. I did, but I'm still hungry. Well, what did you eat for breakfast? I had some cereal and milk. Mm, mm Mm-hmm. And then I had some yogurt with honey. Okay. And then I had some steak with a side of baked potato, chives, and sour cream. And that was topped with Parmesan cheese served over a pound of asparagus doused in butter. That, in turn, was folded into a phyllo dough pastry rolled through sesame seeds topped with a light sausage gravy featuring a tray of biscuits and scrambled eggs with candied bacon and yams. With a side of Cornish game hen, forced into a chicken stuffed as well into a turkey with yet more bread stuffing and giblets therein, complemented nicely with a rack of lamb and side of oxen, further accompanied by a loaf of bread, some foie gras, and crackers, and reasonable portion of sorbet to finish. And you're still hungry? Yes. Do we have anything else in the house for you to eat? Mm, maybe the dog. Terrare, please be serious. I already ate the cat. Oh, I think you need to move out. Um... I'm only 17 years old. Where where would I go? Join the circus? Don't be ridiculous. I hear there's a roving band of thieves and prostitutes in town. Maybe see if they have an opening. If you think it's for the best. I, I do. Okay. Hey, Mom? Yes, dear? I feel bad about the cat. I don't feel bad. I never liked the cat. He didn't taste very good. Very hairy. You ate him. Hair and all? Yes. I don't feel so good. I I don't imagine that you would. Should I send for the doctor? <coughs> oh, that was gross. <laughs> Is that a hairball? Good. Get it all up there, little Terrare. That's a good lad. I feel better. Oh, good. So never mind the doctor again. Off you go. I like that you rotate your accents to the wrong country, (laughs) but do it well. It's just a thing, I guess, yeah. I I just, I think you need to go with where your heart takes you on those. Yeah, I I just, I don't think, I could have done Russian, I guess. No, like like I said, I had not anger and offend the one French listener we apparently have. (laughs) But you do have, you said, lad. It's your fault. For historians. Welcome, everyone. This is Poor Historians, the podcast delving into the archives of medical history. As three practicing emergency physicians, we will explore the unusual ailments, treatments, physicians, and all related material having to do with the healing arts. Though we are all practicing emergency physicians, we wish to be clear that this is not a podcast from which you or anybody should take medical advice. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. If we should fail in our goal to provide entertainment, well, I guess this is a podcast that just exists. It exists, however, to definitely not provide medical advice. I'm Max, and I'm joined here by my good friends and colleagues, Aaron and Mike. So I'd like to ask you all a question. If you were stuck eating an extremely large quantity of something and could only pick one food item, what would it be? Scallops. Scallops, really? (laughs) Like seared? Like, I don't know, man. It's like probably one of my favorite foods now. Hmm. I, I gotta say, I gotta say burritos. I, I would always, when I ate burritos when I was younger, I would always, no matter how much there was, I would eat it. Just couldn't stop. You just, hmm. and then I'd end up super full, had a giant food baby. I don't know. It's kind of my weakness when there's the portion is too large. That's fair. I'm going to go. I think my biggest weakness is popcorn. I can eat popcorn oh. endlessly. And so really I food. have an absolute impaction because how you guys made me look stupid. No, scallops are that's a good choice, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's a little it's highbrow, but lobster, it's not realistic, but fine. You can buy yeah. popcorn in 
trash bags from certain people. So yeah, I mean, scallops are like a mainstay of the food shows, I'm man. They always saying, have scallops. One food, yeah. I mean, they're great. I love them. I'm just, our choices are a little bit more economical. I understand we have high tastes. <laughs> can can I uh, share something? Can I speak candidly? Always. Please. Um, I love buffets. Love buffets. There's just something about them that I just absolutely love. And um, so in med school, I had two roommates, Brian and Ken. They probably, well, hopefully they would listen to this at some point. We went to the casino because they had a buffet and we decided we were going to do an eat off. (laughs) (laughs) It's apparently something that Brian did all the time. So I get in there and we eat and we eat and we eat and we're all just like, we're getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And finally, we all kind of tapped out. We're like, all right. We all win. So then O'Brien's like, nope, I have to win. So we went to the ice cream bar and ate a bunch of ice cream. So we, <laughs> we all got sick. Brian goes into the bathroom, pukes, and he puked right after he had eaten his ice cream. So the ice cream somehow ended up right on top of the pile of puke in the toilet. <laughs> and then he had us all come in and look at it. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, the proper are... maneuver. You got to have somebody look at that. You have to have a witness. Well, yeah, we didn't have cell phones with cameras back then. What do you get? Picture it didn't happen, you know? (laughs) You had to experience things. Yeah. I know that was kind of a gross story, but... um, (laughs) There was a disclaimer. I think we're good. I digress. Yeah. It's locked in. All right. Well, speaking of which, uh, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, you might have gotten a little bit of a a sense of it from the intro, but uh, we're going to talk about a a fascinating medical case from 18th century France, Uh, a gentleman named Terrare. Uh, We know about him because he ended up treated by doctors of the day and they wrote it up. And um, unsurprisingly, because he was treated by doctors, ended up at autopsy where things also didn't go very well. A bit of a YouTube celebrity and um, few sources really because he was born to a poor family uh, close to Lyon in France in about 1772. And so the the stories are all pretty close. So essentially we're, we're kind of veering into the medical oddity realm a little bit, would you say? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. That's a, certainly what this case is. So, I don't know if we'll stay here or not, but um, I mean, it's harder to speak in an educated fashion about oddities, but. Didn't we do that with the testicular teratoma though i mean there was like a 45 pound mass it had teeth and hair and all sorts of other things yeah that would that That's would kind of definitely be like a museum quality oddity but it's also like a known medical thing I so, mean, we oh, see... so he I, I see what you're saying he yeah. is the oddity not yeah, the condition he, but exactly the yeah. we're, we're, we're discussing an unusual case study is really what this turns yeah. out to be yeah mm-hmm. and his unreal appetite is what made him famous so he could not be satisfied no matter what he ate. And the appetite literally ruled his short 26 year life. Nobody knows much about his early life. Cause again, he was a peasant, but he got to the point that he could eat uh, almost a quarter of a cow daily. And his parents were unable to care for him. So they told him to leave the house, which, you know, at 17, uh, probably not unreasonable in that, that era uh, joined yeah. up with a, like yeah. midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. Well, for him, definitely. I want a Corvette. I'm out of here. And uh, I don't know where you buy a whole cow every four days either. Yeah. I mean, how many cows do they have to begin with? Did they start stealing neighbors? Cow? I mean, that's that's a more than a cow a week. I have no idea. Costco. I mean, this is before Costco, but I feel like you'd have to rely on some sort of bulk. Yeah. Food processing. It cost cow. <laughs> you might get to this later, but was he super morbidly obese was he just huge no no i will i will get to that in just a second yeah definitely he joined up with a wandering band of thieves and prostitutes um every history very clear on that exact point so i don't know (laughs) and i I uh, do i I do like to imagine that as a you know you you can't take care of your family member it's a heart-wrenching decision it's like they can go to an orphanage (laughs) and go into some sort of early military service, or you could consider the thieves and prostitutes that are about town and send them off with them. Probably happens more often than you think, even now. Oh, sick burn, bro. I'm sure that you could go on Craigslist and find opportunities. So he made a living as a street performer, eating anything people would give him. And when he wasn't, when he wasn't doing this though, to make money, he was reported to wander streets and eat whatever else he found and, and including whatever was in trash heaps in France at the time. Oof. 
So the descriptions of the man are are something. So when he hadn't just eaten, there a description of of his skin just kind of hanging off his bones uh, to the point where he could wrap his excess belly skin like all the way around himself. Uh, his cheeks are really saggy because when they were full, he could fit like six eggs in each cheek or more. That was one of his things. He would just stuff stuff in his mouth. And then he just smelled terrible, um, had terrible gas all the time. Uh, even to mention that his name, Terare, which is not a real name, is a modification of slang at the time for farts in French, which <laughs> I, I can't, I don't have any, my family members that speak French don't speak 18th century French. So I don't know if that's true or not. It's so basically it, this is, this is this poor gentleman who has uh, unspecified at this point medical condition where he is compelled to eat enormous quantities of the weirdest, grossest stuff results in complete debilitating body odor or maybe just gas. I, I, it sounds like it's probably <laughs> I, I think just it's gas. Maybe both. Hard to say. I mean, they talk about meat sweats too and just, yeah, it could be both, <laughs> but he definitely had, he had frequent loose stools or sorry, loose bowel movements that were described as quote, fetid beyond all conception. So, I mean, he really definitely had troubles there. And I would like to say somebody who has consumed large amounts of protein over the last six months as part of a lifting regimen, I can at least empathize a little bit. I've driven away a few family members. <laughs> yep. Like at one time or in just college, off the couch? Well, the dogs don't come near me anymore. I mean, it's almost a superpower, right? Sometimes. It can be in, in the age of social distancing. It actually can be yeah. a superpower. So then after he ate these large quantities of food, he would just completely blimp up. His, his, his stomach would be completely full and stretched, and then he would sleep. So he'd, he'd just eat this giant amount and kind of fall into a food coma, so to speak. Never put on any sort of weight. So he, they say he was about 100 some pounds, maybe, um, and not tall and just sickly. It sounds like a wonderful life thus far. I yeah, know, is this how they guy. discovered tryptophan? It sounds like Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it could be. I mean, but well, I'm sure he ate the turkeys or turkey bones or turkey innards or whatever he found in the trash heap. So he came to some renown when he it was Europe and there were there were wars on all the time. So he went to join the military and and they couldn't feed him either. They'd give him quadruple rations. And he had his first encounter with doctors at the military hospital and they had more detailed accounts of his eating. So they they started with the quadruple rations, but he would still after that he'd trade tasks or favors, or he'd, you know, he'd do stuff that other people had to do to get their food and that wouldn't work. So then he'd sneak away at night and eat from the trash heaps again, or he'd start, and he starts to get a little weird here. He snuck into the apothecary room in the camp and started to eat the poultices that they had probably made for injuries and so on. Right. So mishmashes of herbs and God knows what else. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, oh God. So True to form with early medical experimentation, you know, they decided to just, you know, I, I feel like early medical experiments are basically 12 or 13 year old boys deciding to see what could possibly happen if you do whatever you want to. And so they decided to see how much he could eat. Um, and it says at this point, they normally they would try to restrain him around food because otherwise he'd eat all of it. But mm -hmm. one time they let him go and they put, they had a, a table set for 15 some laborers. So they had all these different pies and just milk and butter and all this stuff. And they said, hey, could he maybe eat all that? And he does. He eats as much as 15 or 16 people do in a single setting without stopping, like spread out on this giant French table and then just falls asleep. <laughs> I, I love early science. When it's just like, eh, we're playing around with the scientific method. <laughs> they recognize something is different about this person. So they just get out the clipboards and it's just like, fuck it. Let's see what you can do. Boy, he could eat a lot. Write that down. Publish. <laughs> and we're done. Science. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Violet, you're turning violet. <laughs> But then they, they get even worse. So they tried a bunch of live animals. So they, they, they did at one point famously a live cat. So he he eats the whole cat except the bones. I don't know at what point he kind of like, I don't know how he ate it. But so he eats the whole thing and then he spits up the hair later. Um, he had lizards. They fed him a puppy, which I can barely you know talk about. He had a, a live eel. So they had fed him the eel. And then the story is that he like, broke the skull with his teeth and then and then just swallowed it which <laughs> wait so I mean, he I mean, all this stuff 
but he wouldn't eat hair. That's kind of messed up. <laughs> You'd eat garbage, but he won't eat hair. He's like, that's nope, the one that's thing. Is, yep. Well, I, I mean, possibly. <laughs> well, no, if he coughed it up, I mean, it might have been his, his GI tract was finally like, you know what? That's enough. I can't do the mm, hair. I that don't. is the straw. That is the final straw. Enough with the puppies and kittens. Although in fair, I, I don't, there has to be some ex- exaggeration here, right? I mean, come on. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried to put a cat in a cat carrier? <laughs> you got to know the cat. Yeah. What did they drug the cat first? It'd be like I mean, swallowing a, a, a handful of angry nails. It'd just be <laughs> clawing its way back out your esophagus. I mean, well, yeah. It's not like he had a huge mouth either. So he had to kill the cat. They said oh. he was fed a live cat, but. Oh, we'll talk about it in the eye. He did have a huge mouth though. Like what, he, really? he had. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, the 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 cheeks go along with his jaw. I mean, I talk about it in the autopsy section. Sadly, not to spoilers, you know. But spoiler alert: the guy <laughs> from seventeen fifty is no longer alive. Well, this has certainly been strange and unpleasant to this point. Let's take a little break and take uh, take a look into what was probably happening at one point in this man's life. An 18th century French doctor and general are in a debate about what to do about the soldier that won't stop eating everything. Well, what in the hell are we supposed to do? This guy keeps eating. He just don't stop eating. He's on quadruple rations and he's still hungry. What am I supposed to do about this? I don't know. Fix it, damn it. This isn't normal for a man to eat so much. There must be something wrong with him, medically speaking. Maybe he's still a growing young man? Sir, he is in his 20s, and he eats entire animals. There is something wrong with this individual. Uh, Many people differ in the size of their appetites, perhaps. Well, perhaps you're an idiot. This man is not normal. He does not have a normal appetite. He eats and eats. And not only does he not seem to gain weight or ever get full, but he eats things that are not food. He is sick. Well... Diets can vary. Sometimes people who are anemic crave dirt. Might have to do with low iron in his blood. I watched this man eat a fistful of iron shavings this morning. Eh, So probably not low iron then. I would think not. Well, is he an effective soldier? No, he can't shoot. He complains incessantly about his hunger and he has an unpleasant odor about him. He is not, in fact, a good soldier. So, he can eat anything? Uh, pretty much. Maybe maybe you're thinking about this all wrong. Well, what in the hell does that mean? Well, if he can eat and swallow almost anything, maybe you should put that to your advantage. Okay, I have to admit that I do not follow you. Why not use him as a spy? He could swallow boxes with messages, travel across enemy lines, and deliver the contents in whichever way he sees fit to officers who are captured. All right. So you're suggesting that we make him a spy. I feel this man has a debilitating problem and you want me to order him to use it to our advantage. Doesn't that seem exploitative? It's like 1790 and I'm a doctor. So I, for one, have no moral compunction about doing this. Oh, yes. Now that you mention it, I I guess I don't either. So, he's a spy then? Great idea. We'll have him ingest a message at once for the captured colonel of our eastern forces. What's the message going to say? I I don't know. I'm thinking, uh, hey, colonel, you alive? (laughs) Uh, Circle one, yes. No, maybe. And then the colonel can pick up an answer. Uh, Terari can bring it back to us. And after that, oh, I like this plan. And how is that message helpful to the war effort? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm I'm just curious if it's going to work. I see. Uh, And who are we fighting again? The the Prussians. It's the Russians with a P. Mm -hmm. And does Terare speak German? Uh, uh, He does not, no. Hmm. Seems like that might impact his ability to be an effective spy. Yeah, I, I imagine it will. General. 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 Yeah, what? I'm hungry. No, oh, perfect timing, son. Well, that skit certainly was odd. I wonder what it was based off of. 
so there's a great sort of segment in the middle of his life where the military tried to put this to some good use. So they tried to treat it like a, like a superpower. So they, they gave him a box with a secret message inside the box and they had him swallow that at the beginning of a meal and then see if he could like sneak across enemy lines with this message inside his stomach. Cause of course you could never get to it, but they were fighting the Germans or the Prussians or whoever the Habsburgs at that time. And he couldn't speak any German, so he didn't pass very well as a German peasant. So he got he got caught, and they eventually, under torture, gave up his secret because he thought it was a real secret message. And they chained him to a toilet till he pooped it out, and <laughs> then they got mad because it was a fake message and like dumped him back in France. I mean, the poor guy just just not a good spy. He's not a very good spy, despite his superpower. Yeah, well how would you stay hidden when you stink that bad? And when you look like that and you, I mean, yeah, it just. <laughs> Terrare, the spy who shits things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they had to have caught him and he's just, I was like, I know they're interrogating and they're probably very mean, but I, even if you told them, Hey, I, I, sw- I have a secret message and that I ate. It's inside. It's inside of me. It's inside my stomach. I either have to vomit it out or, shit it out as it were i guess you do chain him to the toilet just to see if he's telling the truth we do that at work we do that at work somebody swallows drugs you're like you're gonna sit on the toilet and shit these drugs out and when you're done then you can leave i don't, I don't know, know that, that i've ever done that at work you never have well you're too young then <laughs> yeah i don't chain him to the, the toilet but you're right you can't i mean obviously you can't stuffing yeah so if somebody stuffs a a bag of drugs somewhere that it shouldn't be right. You can't go after it. That's that'd be a violation in all sorts of ways. So you have to wait. Right. But it's potentially dangerous. So yeah, no, that's (laughs) great. You have to wait for either they develop symptoms or they, for some reason, change their mind and let you do. Well, yeah. I mean, if they pack themselves with, you know, a kilo of Coke, well, you got to get that out. Otherwise you're going to die after bag rips. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know if you could fit a kilo of Coke inside somebody's, butthole i don't know i've never it's uh i mean it depends there's there in the emergency medicine textbook there are definitions of packing and stuffing yes and i i always remembered it by packers are more professional and so that means typically uh there is a lot of thought process it's putting the drugs into like double condoms and swallowing them typically and things like that and uh, it's sort of horrifying that people do go to these lengths stuffing is Cops are after me. I'm going to take this drug and put it somewhere quickly. And uh, generally speaking, stuffing, uh, you will see much more side effect because it's not professionally wrapped. And if you if you take, I guess, I don't know how you do this, but if you take a fistful of cocaine and you stuff it in the nearest available orifice, you're going to have side effects. You're going right. to absorb that. And there's going to be problems. Yeah. yeah Even so if that's it's why. in a Ziploc. Right. That's why you give them Miralax and let them sit on the toilet and shit their brains out <laughs> until the bags you don't come chain out. them to the toilet, though. That's no, def- definitely not. Good call comparing us to you know Prussian military counterintelligence officers. Right. That's they wrote the book. Right? <laughs> uh, so at that point, he's kind of he gets desperate for a cure. So you know, this doesn't sound like a fun existence. It, it just couldn't be a spy. Couldn't do anything. So he's he. He sort of checks himself back into the people at the military hospital and says, can you help me? And they try everything and nothing works. But, I, you know, the list was interesting. There's, they tried, I don't know how vinegar would work. They'd make, make him eat cigarette butts. He, they tried soft boiled <laughs> eggs until he's really full. They tried laudanum, which makes some sense because, you know, if you're, you know, less, it slows the gut down. But just laudanum nothing Laudanum being basically tincture of opium in, in alcohol. So you're basically giving him opiates. Yeah. Yeah, or hopefully, I hopefully morphine. Are... Uh, I think it's morphine or opium. I can't remember which one. I don't know. That was probably his favorite try, though. I would think. I would imagine. <laughs> it's like okay, whatever. Yummy. But it just gets worse and worse. So they're trying to cure him, but he's in a hospital. So he starts sneaking out of his room at night. But now there's no trash heaps, so there's other people having bloodletting go on. So they said he snuck into the rooms and like drank the blood as it was being let by whatever method they did or. Uh, there's stories that he went into the morgue and just started to eat what was in the morgue. Um, but the sort of the final sad chapter was that uh, uh, there's no witness of this, but a, 
18 or a 14 month old child in the hospital goes missing and everybody just assumes that he did this. So they, they kick him out and make him leave the hospital. Wait, um, is he a werewolf? Does he turn into a dingo? <laughs> <laughs> a dingo ain't my baby. <laughs> just, I mean, even for 18th century France, I'm reading this. I'm like, oh man, this is just bad. You know, that wasn't a clean hospital either. So he's, He's I don't lost. Think that happened. Uh, you know, that's the thing. I mean, that's <laughs> you get to that point. You're like, he didn't eat a baby. I mean, there's no evidence before that he's, I mean, he's going to trash heaps. He's never, you know, I mean, when he's to his own devices, just, yeah, I don't know. That seems a bit much. So was it this seems written like up artistic license. In a medical journal, was this, because this sounds like a lot of the, you know, like Brothers Grimm stories and Things yeah. like that. Like, yeah, you wonder. It, there is a completely made. I up. mean, there was a French medical journal that published his initial, especially the autopsy, which we'll we'll sort of get to a little bit. But um, of course, I, you know, I'm sorry I didn't translate that. So I didn't go to the original source. But I think a lot of this is perhaps a bit exaggerated. Uh, but he's, so he's lost a history. He comes back again, begging to be cured, saying he might have swallowed a fork. Um, and instead, he just had TB, which eventually killed him at about 26 years of age. And so they, they TB did it. Being. Uh, oh, sorry, tuberculosis. So, yeah, so and tuberculosis, which is, you know, an infection still, unfortunately, very common in the world, but very slow moving. And then uh, if it gets in your lungs, it will spread to multiple parts of the body and sort of form these pockets of infection and such that make you really sick overall. Um, Can I share a story so, about TB? It's another ghost story. This is from my mom. So her dad, who is Australian, um, apparently he would be walking down the street, be like, ah, it looks like that lady's got TB. And she'd be like, beg your pardon? TB, two buttes. (laughs) (laughs) Like like nice boobs. I got it. We. I don't even know if it actually the, uh, happened. Even with the language barrier, I put that one together. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it actually happened. It's something that she shared with me. And now I'm sharing that it with could you. Be, all. I mean... <laughs> Thank you. So the, the description of the autopsy, essentially a lot of the doctors who tried to do the autopsy just had to abandon the out because they just couldn't get through it. I mean, he was inside as he was outside, just fetid. Um, his, but his jaws, they said his jaws were huge. So he, he could apparently open his mouth. So there was about a four inch gap between his jaws, which if you just kind of, you know, think about that, I mean, that's his enormous, you're almost unhinging his jaw to eat whatever he was eating. Now, now people don't know this a little behind the scenes, but we're actually on video with each other as we do this podcast. And so Aaron, could you try that again? What you just did? Uh, <laughs> I can't. Wait, yeah. That's six inches. No, I mean, that's not. Yeah. Dang. I, I can see your epiglottis from here. <laughs> that's not uh, lies. That's six inches with your fingers that far apart. <laughs> <laughs> this is, keep telling yourself that, Mike. What were you saying, though? Yeah. So his esophagus was so enlarged that you could look into his stomach from his mouth, which I mean, if you're not a medic, that's a new, that's what it's, I guess, <laughs> Max, just give me a look. I mean, it's very possible. Yes, this is a little bit, I, I would believe that it's dilated. I um, believe dilated, but you have like two sphincters in between your, your, where you swallow and your stomach. And well, right. So, like, so it's sphincter, like little tight muscle rings that close things off or, or right, keep it. Right. Now, I, I guess mean, if you're doing an autopsy, those things may be lax and wide open. And this just seems like a very strange autopsy approach. Well, there are, yeah, well, yes, it does. There are conditions where the, the esophagus, which is that sort of tube from the bottom of your throat down into your stomach, will get really, really big. And it'll hold a fair amount of liquid or whatnot when that, because it's a muscle and the muscle gets all saggy and soft and such. And in some cases, it can really enlarge. So this guy, I mean, seems like, makes me wonder about some condition where his structure wasn't put together right. Um, his whole stomach. So when they opened up his stomach or his abdomen, technically it was all his stomach. So his, just the stomach. Um, and if you think about this from like our surgical rotations and such, like the stomach's normally a, not a huge part of your abdomen, which is from the bottom of your ribs down to your belt line, more or less. Um, I mean, it's not a huge, that it was all just stomach. So when he ate all the stuff he ate, just went right into the stomach and all the other organs in his belly area were just almost non-existent or almost like just liquidy and soft and gray and non-functional. Um, 
it says a small liquefied liver, which, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can only imagine what his body had to try to do to, to digest this stuff. I, I, I don't know that I've ever encountered a liquefied liver. <laughs> no, in either medical no. school or since. And yeah, it usually I, goes I, the other way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like turns kind of rubbery and such. Yeah. It doesn't sound good. No. And it's a, usually a big organ. I mean, it's one of the bigger organs in your in your stomach area up there in the, on the right side. So well, it's literally referred to as like one of the solid organs we worry about with trauma. So I think if it right. starts out as a liquid, we're already behind the eight ball. Yeah. <laughs> not, not good. But how did he uh, absorb water? Like if he didn't have a colon, how do you absorb water? I mean, you absorb some from the stomach, but like. Right. I'm surprised that he lived as long as he did. I think, right. You know, at 26 years sounds pretty good for, what this sounds like. And I don't know if this is consequence or cause, right? Was it this way because the, he was just driven to, to eat that much? Mm -hmm. um, or was it something else? I mean, it had to be quite a bit wrong. I, I was kind of curious to do some modern comparisons with this guy though. So I, I went down a little internet rabbit hole of competitive eating records. And there is uh, this organization called Major League Eating is what it's called. And it's a great symbol. It's like a little arm with a fork. It's a professional organization that oversees all competitive eating competitions. And will we use professional? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. when you look at some of these, some of these, you, uh, you know, they're on ESPN, right? And they make money. There's prizes. So we're uh, disc golfers and <laughs> cornholers, and <laughs> like, come on. But yeah, I would say that they're all professionals. Why not? Late night ESPN. I've absolutely seen like miniature golf championships. Like on the Ocho? Uh, yeah, like ESPN 14. Yeah, ESPN's the king of stuff that really shouldn't be on TV. I still have a qualm with the word professional in that context. But, uh, but that, I, that's wait, fair, wait, I wait, 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 wait. What about professional wrestling? Oh, wow. Huh? We're, we're, this is the end of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Just dissolve. No problem with that. This is worse. That's worse than Yoko, which you just did. That's it <laughs> makes sense to have a professional body for the greatest sport on earth. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> It is not major league eating. Okay, so that's fair. But some of these, some of these uh, records are really impressive. So there's a, a chili record for 2.4 gallons of chili in six minutes. I mean, that's two and a half gallons of, ch of chili. There's there's a record for sticks of butter. So seven quarter pound sticks in five minutes. This there's there's one category that just says just buffet. There's all these different <laughs> kinds of foods, and then then there's one that's just like buffet. That's all it says. It doesn't say what kind of buffet. So five was and a half friend. It, was next friend. <laughs> it mm -hmm. could have been five and a half pounds he, of food. Yeah, it was probably way less than that. It was probably like two and a half pounds. Yeah, I mean five and a half pounds of food in twelve minutes. So just I mean that I mean that's I don't even you'd have to just I don't know how they do that. And the hot dogs, of course, with the Nathan's hot dog eating contest, which is the one I've actually seen on ESPN, 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes. So I, these are all legit, well, legit, quote unquote, legit records. I, I've seen, I mean, I've, I've come across this stuff. Like you just, you'll see it and, or you see like news stories for the competitive eating, et cetera, go down the internet rabbit hole and nothing makes me feel sadder than watching this. It, it is... <laughs> There's, there's just nothing redeeming about it. I, not to me. I mean, yeah, the sport. Yeah. Um, well, you could argue that you're trying to see what a human body can accomplish. So if you want to shove 76 hot dogs down your throat in 10 minutes, so then we'll shoot, that's what the human body can do. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. That's, that's I, yeah. true. Uh, there's Completely romance changed to my it. Opinion. But, yeah, it's like running a marathon. Why would anybody do that? It's stupid. The first guy that did it died. But people do it because they want to prove to themselves what their body can do. I bet somebody could shove 76 hot dogs in their butt in 10 minutes as well. <laughs> and that would be a sport too. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are people searching for that on the internet as we speak. They probably are. They, but they did the Taco Bell tacos, 53 soft shell tacos, somebody ate in 10 minutes. Um, the doctors it did, they did feed Terari something called meat pies, which I don't really need to try. There's, there's a meat pie record. So somebody ate 23 six ounce meat pies in 10 minutes. You never have a meat pie? They're awesome. Yeah. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. What kind of meat's in it? Usually probably a mix of pork and lamb. Sounds good. 
in a pastry. So, I mean, the, the actual amounts really aren't that far off from what he's eating. And so the rations were for 15 people that he ate on the table and then 76 hot dogs would, would feed 15 people. So, you know, I mean, these, these modern day terrares are, are right in that same category, but the rest of his story is where it kind of just gets bad and weird. Um, so there oh, has now to it's be getting bad and weird. Wait. <laughs> well, I, this is, this is where medical oddities lead us. I mean, they're, they're kind of a little bit dark. You know, you just, I, I, and I don't know, there's, there's not a lot of high quality speculation about what, um, he might've had. I mean, a lot of sites mention hyperthyroidism, which is a little gland that lives at your neck and is sort of a produces thyroid hormone, which is sort of the master hormone for the body. And this is, I mean, I, I'm I not an expert it. in this area. Yeah. Doubt it. Oh, please. Uh, let's have an endocrine <laughs> review. It's, no, well, you, that's, know, you see plenty that's a, of people that have hyperthyroidism and they're not eating <laughs> eels after they crush their brains or live Exactly. Bats. Right. Well, I mean, but just people are treated normally. Yeah. I mean, they normally get treated. So, but I I'd, think, you know, the, the way I always think of the, 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 thyroid and i mean the endocrine system is really complex and all the things i knew at one point uh i don't know them all anymore but when i have it's not very common in emergency medicine that you deal with an acute thyroid problem but it definitely happens and so when when it has been something that i've caught like to explain it it's sort of like it's that gland that's at the base of your neck and it it's sort of when it's revved up and it's working too much your metabolism's too high. And so your uh, all the things that seem like revved up things like fast heart rates, hyper reflexes, sweating, weight loss, that's kind of the thyroid is working, is, is overactive. And there's a variety of reasons it could be, but then you flip that and a thyroid that is underactive, it's, it's sort of take all that metabolism revved up and now flip it on its head. And now it's everything is slowed down. Your heart rate's slower, your uh, your intestines are moving slower, you put on weight. And so, I mean, that's the general way I think about the gland. And people who have really overactive thyroids most commonly is something called Graves' disease, which is uh, where your body produces these antibodies that essentially overactivate the thyroid. But even then, I, I thought about hyperthyroidism with this, but I believe if you don't treat some of these, I think they could likely be fatal. I know he died at a young age, but yeah, still made it through 26 years, right? And yeah. hyperthyroidism. I mean, in is, that day and age, that was probably middle to late middle age. Right. And it's it's not entirely uncommon. I mean, yeah, it, I wouldn't say it's common. It. Yeah. I, I it mean, it had a name. It, like, right. Too gripe. much yellow bile or something. I mean, yeah, who knows? Or, like, or, yeah, the yeah. Norwegian gripe or <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Something. <laughs> it's it's, it's got to be something more rare than that because this is such a strange story. What, um, to me, it sounds like Prater Willie, doesn't it? Kind of. They do have disorders of appetites. Yeah, there's Prater Willie is a, is a, oh, is a chromosomal disorder or it's, yes. a, it's a birth defect. Yeah, I mean, often disorder. it's pica, so they'll they'll like crave a certain food or non food food. But um, yeah, people with Prater Willie, you've got to lock the fridge because otherwise they'll just eat and eat and eat. That's maybe that's don't what they do they had. not put on weight though? Um, yeah, they do. Uh, it can be a big problem. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean, to me, when you think of his autopsy, it's there's some short circuit that nobody knows, and it seems likely to be very rare because it was so severe. And then I wonder if it was all consequence. So if you if you ate like a professional eater, <laughs> just to use that term again, every day, what would it do to your body? You'd get, first off, you'd catch everything that was in the trash heaps. So you'd have sure. Giardia, you'd have, you'd have all these different, you know, bacteria living in your gut that are bad for you. You'd be exposed to all manner of terrible things. And then just the sheer mechanical aspect of it is is maybe part of the reason that like the liver would probably just be like overwhelmed and the everything would be stretched. I wonder if it's just all consequences of nobody, you know, restraining him as they said they had to do when he was uh, in the military camp. Well, and it's I, I actually I looked uh, as I was reading about this uh, before this episode, uh, I was looking into kind of how competitive eaters train. And so there might be something to that. So competitive eaters, a lot of, it seems like a lot of their focus is trying to stretch their stomach or stretch their esophagus or both. And so it involves things like gradually swallowing bigger ice cubes 
So at least that way, if it gets stuck, it'll melt and probably not cause too much harm. Or like drinking a gallon of water as quickly as possible and eating two heads of cabbage just to swell your stomach up. And <laughs> the idea being you literally expand it, expand it, expand it. And over time, it'll accommodate more and more food. So I guess the question is, did something natural happen to him where that was the case? And then it threw most of his endocrine system out of whack where he literally couldn't regulate his diet any further. I suppose that's one thing of spe uh, speculation. And another thing I came across was uh, there. You know, there's a couple of hormones that are associated with eating. There's one called ghrelin, which tends to get released if you are hungry. So like ghrelin gets the stomach growling is the way I always remembered it. And the other one was leptin, which kind of lets you know when you're full. And some people, it's rare, but some people don't have they don't make that hormone or they, they can't use that hormone. And so they literally can't know when they're full. They have no feeling of it. So it's possible he had that. And then over time is, and that typically is picked up in childhood. It, it's, uh, he could have, he literally could have been that way his whole life. And then he had to eat so much because he, he just could not know he was full. So he didn't have to, but he felt <laughs> like he had to. Well, I mean, there's definitely some drive that's beyond the normal with the stuff that he's doing. I mean, there's a lot of taboos that he, a ton of taboos that he broke that normal people would never do. So it just, you know, I, I don't know. You know me, got to be the downer. I always just kind of feel sad at the end of things. Mm -hmm. um, one last record. Somebody ate 17.7 pounds of cow brains in 15 minutes. That's a pound a minute of cow brains for just with like an ice cream scoop. <laughs> I don't know. Man. It's crazy. If I ate that many or that much weight in cow brains, you'd have to scrape me off the floor. <laughs> that was kind of a medical dad joke. I know. You want to explain it? Not really. <laughs> Creutzfeldt Jakob, mad cow disease. Creutzfeldt Jakob, aka Scrapey. Prion so jokes. Knowledge in a minute. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah, no, no satisfying conclusion. So at least my understanding is they don't really know what happened with this, uh, this gentleman. So we are kind of left to speculate. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, I think it's a little bit, it's a strange enough case study that probably the endocrinologists, you know, I, I don't know a lot of endocrinologists that seem like the type of people who are going to cruise around the corners of YouTube and watch competitive eating contests. They don't seem like that sort. So, I mean, the people that might actually know what happened, I don't know if they brought their expertise to bear on this case. Well, if one of those endocrinologists is listening to this podcast, please send us an email. I would love to know. We got a cold case out. from the 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> a case I wanted to discuss with you. In fact, next time at work, uh, cause I don't, we don't often have to call the endocrinologist. I'll, I think I'll bring this up as an aside. Yeah. Maybe. I don't want to talk about this diabetic uh, DKA patient. I want to talk about, <laughs> I got a question. Let me give you this story. You tell me the diagnosis. Maybe he was really a chimera from some ancient alien snake people. <laughs> and it's it plausible. Right? Because you could open Sounds like a, really a boa wide. constrictor, right? Like yeah. the jaw opens super wide and they eat everything and then just digest, digest it over time. Case closed. Well, there we go. That is the terrifying story of Terrari. Well, it looks like that's all we have for today. We appreciate everyone listening. If you'd like to send us a message or provide feedback, we can be reached through our website, www.poorhistorianspod.com. There you can find links to our social media sites and interact with us through there. We have... We <laughs> Sentences are hard. We take emails at poorhistorianspod at gmail.com. Or if you're old-fashioned, throw a brick through our window. Until next time, we are Aaron Max and Mike signing off and reminding you that modern medicine sure has come a long way, and we sure do appreciate that. Closing Tangent. Like, all right, so weird things that you've eaten that... Uh, and food and film and things like that. And, you know, we, we talked about Star Wars last time, and there's just one thing about Star Wars when it comes to food, and you guys might know what I'm talking about. It's from Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Anakin is sitting across the table from Padme <laughs> Amidala. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? Yes. Oh, I and that. Oh, my God. The, the, the digital apple that he made, he force fed her. <laughs>
He literally force fed her. I mean, he force force fed her. Oh, so terrible. Like they're, right? he they're cuts having it this date. Yeah. Lifts. But they're, oh. they must and be it's supposed to be before. like romantic, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he picks up that apple and it just floats over to her face. Like levitates and then, it towards her. And then just attaches so securely to her fork. She doesn't even have to poke <laughs> it. <laughs> and then she eats it. But like, it would just, it looks so weird. It's so, anyway. yeah, it's super cringy. I, I mean, I, I, my wonder is when they wrote it, did they write it ironically? And I sadly think they did not. I think they wrote it as it was supposed to be like this touching moment of the future Darth Vader using his force powers to essentially. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that Lucas has the knack for irony at all. Is it? Do you think it's? Isn't it Top Gun where there's like the scene where there's like this erotic eating food from the fridge kind of thing? I don't remember that. <laughs> I, I'm either. I'm, I might be conflating that with like Hot Shots Part Two, or <laughs> maybe maybe you're thinking of Top Buns <laughs> <laughs> or Foreskin. Quit, quit gum. looking at my search history, Mike. <laughs> but I wasn't there. Like, am I crazy? Wasn't there a scene in Top Gun where they're like? trying to sexily eat food or something and it just doesn't work it no be. they were this they is were... the blue light scene and then top gun is what i remember no but... so they're they're singing that song with the jukebox and in the middle of the room they were making pottery and there was this <laughs> specter with a succubus behind this lady and they're making a vase it happened in top gun you realize that Inflated nobody the entire 90s and 80s <laughs> yeah only people who lived through the 90s are gonna get any and of they these did it in the corner they're like you guys have to go in the corner because you can't be in the center of the room while you do this and the guy <laughs> look i'm looking the, hold baby on i'm looking this up I want... but then it was like honey, yeah. the kids and the baby got really big and didn't want to take a nap no <laughs> I'm, I'm looking up whether or not I'm crazy about the Top Gun scene because I haven't seen it in probably 20 years. Is the internet so expansive that you could type in just Google, Google Top Gun food scene? For, for I, I just people. did. I said, and I found an immediate article. Is there anything more awkward than the sex scene in Top Gun? And I just oh, trying to wow, I'm, I'm scrolling it. through it while you guys are chatting is and I'm one trying to figure out what it was. No, was that a different movie? Which one? The one with the apple pie, the sex scene. That's isn't that I don't know. American pie? I don't know. I can't, yeah. This I don't I don't know that I wanna read this entire scene. <laughs> no. I'm probably thinking Hot Shots Part Two, right? Hot Shots. They, was- they might have made fun of it. Yeah, I think maybe maybe that's just the reality oh, no. I remember I, now. Yeah. Where the lady was French? What movie? This is going to be terrifying to Google. <laughs> be very careful with your word About choice here. Airplane. Is... He's not actually typing. He's just got a yeah a sound for typing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I just googled what movie has a sex scene with food about airplanes. So I figured that would probably hone it in fairly safely. Uh, Ten sexiest food scenes in movies. Well, I mean. Yeah, I don't know if Top Gun would make the top. If I don't even remember it, so. Oh, have you guys heard of the Mandela effect? Yes. Yeah, so th- that Max might actually be suffering from the Mandela effect. I probably am. It's when you you think that there and there's a collective consciousness about events that have happened that never actually happened that people believe happened. One of the, yes, like the, I've heard of this. Yeah, one of the famous ones are like the Darth Vader line where he's like luke i'm your father and everyone's like it's luke i am your father but it's no i am your father but people just remember it different ways that's the mandela effect like people are convinced yeah memory is pretty fallible well and that's where the collect it can't it comes from like the collective memory of people thinking at one point that nelson mandela had passed away when he had mm-hmm. but a lot of people kind of were just wrong turns out people are wrong a lot <laughs> yeah, yeah frequently yeah. and pretend we're not was there not? Oh no! Was there not like a Hot Shots Part One? Did it just go there straight was. to yeah, Part Two? <laughs> it's the worst film franchise to try to look at. Well, maybe that's overdoing it. There, there are maybe a lot of bad film franchises. Cleaver but... Sullivan in that? <laughs> uh, no, Lloyd Bridges was though. 
but okay. Yeah, no, I'm I'm gonna have to go find that movie and watch it again because I need to sort out what my brain thinks happened twenty years ago. Yeah, I think sexy food is always kind of problematic, really. I mean yeah, if any it, listeners know what, what it is I'm trying to talk about, please tell me. <laughs> Throw a brick through my window. <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep until I know what my brain is referencing. Maybe it was last night's dinner. And the sexy food time happened at your house. I don't know. We had enchiladas. Mm, that is not that a sexy, sexy food. food. Well, you don't think so? Not the way you eat it. Mm-hmm. 